Okay. So this lecture, we're going to look at the supply housing. We're going to look at the what determines the, the price kind of between cities and within cities, and then we'll look at government policies. All right. So look what determines the price, and then we're going to look at all the various government policies that kind of just affect what housing like looks like, you know, on the ground um, and how that affects the supply. And, you know, of course that will relate to price. So first of all, if we're just comparing cities, you know, so we all know where the high price cities are, you know, San Francisco, um, LA, New York, Boston, and, you know, there, there are, you know, lower price cities like Phoenix and Houston where housing is much more affordable. Ultimately, you know, like anything, the price is going to be determined by supply and demand. So on the demand side, you have income, like, okay, what, how much people make the kind of other benefits of, uh, of that area. And then the number of buyers, like, okay, how nice is it to, to live there, uh, which will affect the demand, um, the income and the number of buyers, just like with any other market on the supply side. Okay. We're really talking about, you know, the, this curve and also the shape of this curve, but okay, what's the available land, land like? Can I move this out? How much is the construction cost? Again, this would be like input prices. If you remember back to your econ 1050 and then permitting zoning restrictiveness, like basically, you know, how elastic is this? Is this vertical? Can I, you know, can it be pushed out or are we kind of, is the city quote unquote full, you know, for, for cities that are heavily zoned, you know, say a city that's heavily zoned for single family housing, you know, once it's filled with single family housing, it's effectively capped. It's effectively like that's as large as, as um, it can get. So this will affect the supply. So ultimately these two curves are going to, going to determine your price. So you take something like, take, take a city like LA, which has the demand curve pushed all the way out. Basically, you know, you got rich, bunch of rich people, a lot of buyers, um, you know, the weather's good. And the supply curve is basically pushed all the way back. You know, there's not that much available land. Construction costs are high um, and it's heavily zoned for single family housing. So this thing's pushed all the way back. The demand curve is pushed all the way that. What, how, what, what's the equilibrium going to be? Very, very high prices, you know, compared to say a city where nobody wants to live. I don't know, some city in the Midwest where nobody wants to live. Demand would be way down here. Supply, you know, it's super cheap. So supply is way out here. And so you have, you know, really inexpensive prices. So that really kind of gives us the overall price level between cities. Our just our basic supply and demand theory gets us a long way into explaining prices between cities. Once we go within a city, say you go, you know, on a street, what determines the price differences kind of within a specific neighborhood or even between neighborhoods? For there, we get, really it's going to be we can break down the house into its components. How big it is. How big is the lot? What's the crime rate? How many bathrooms it has? What are the schools like? How close is good transit? Or how close it is to say like freeways or something like that? And when it was built. Once you have this information, basically you're breaking the house down into its characteristics. That essentially will explain the differences in housing price between houses within uh, a city. Basically, the overall city will determine kind of the level of the prices. And then the variation between that average price is determined by the specifics of, of the house. All right. And then basically for those of you that are familiar with regressions, you can, this is, this is what's called hedonic pricing. Uh, you can figure out what the ho housing price is. So if you go on like a website, actually, let me try to do this, try to do this live here. This may be a mistake. Okay. All right. Let's go to Loyola Marymount. So I'm just Googling to get this all set up. All right. Okay. Yeah. So let me show you this. So share your screen. So if I go to like a housing, a housing website, like Redfin or something like that, you know, this is showing all the, the houses for sale. Zoom in here. Okay. So this is showing me. Zoom out. All right. So this is a house that's actually for sale, this red one right here. Okay. But what Redfin is doing is telling you, oh my gosh. All right. Look at how expensive these houses are. I think this one's where the president lives. I think this one right here. 
Oop, maybe not that one. This one. Yeah. I think that's the one. Anyways, so what, what Redfin is doing, or maybe it's this one. Well, whatever. He lives in one of these ones. Um, I've seen him. I've seen him. Um, but what Redfin is doing, it's basically it's running this hedonic pricing model, where it's taking the characteristics of this house, six beds, six baths, this many square feet, um, when it was built, and it's running a regression where it's, you know, it has all those characteristics in it, and it's spitting out a predicted price. So what Redfin is doing in the background is basically running a regression on all these and spitting out a predicted price. I'm trying to think the, I think usually my students roll rent. So like when I used to, when, you know, back before the pandemic, I'd go trick or treating with my kid, not, not by myself. <laughs> I'd run into my, so these are those, these are ones where students live in. This is how much the houses are worth. Okay. Anyways, what's going on behind the scenes is they're running regression with those characteristics, with the characteristics of the house. And basically is predicting, based on those characteristics, is predicting what it thinks the price um, will be. Okay. All right. And so this is basically what the regression looks like if you're familiar with regressions. We're putting in, we're putting in this data and it's spitting out a predicted price. Basically it's fitting, you know, it's a line of best fit using this data. Okay. Just to give you an example, this is an example where, you know, how you can use this. Well, if you're Redfin, you can, you can use this to predict pricing. So you can go in, and I'll have you do this on your homework. You can go in, find your parents' house. Um, you can find out what the, what the house would, what they would predict it would, it would uh, sell for if you were to put it on the market. So that's one, that's, that's one use of this. Another use of this is trying to value different, uh, different policies. So this is an example of, okay, what do we, if we were to develop this farmland, what would, what would the value of, uh, uh, of that be? Okay. All right. And so basically what they can say is like, they're looking at what is the value of open land? So properties adjacent to open price had 12, almost 13% higher values, okay? Um, properties located, farmland had lower values, major roads, um, lower, lower values, okay. So the idea here is running this regression, I can kind of see if I build up on this wetlands, um, what is, how much is that going to change, uh, change, uh, change, change the value of the housing? So for them, preserving this 10 acre parcel of open space um, surrounded by these 15 properties was calculated at 410,000, okay? The value of preserving that is about that much. Where does that come from? It's how much those housing prices would change if we, if we develop that. So then you can weigh the costs and benefits of, uh, of a variety of, uh, of policies. All right, so that gives you the basic of pricing. And this is, I mean, like we're surprisingly, not surprisingly, I mean, this is the era of big data. We're good at this. So, you know, we can take a piece of land anywhere, basically in the US and get a good estimate for exactly what it would sell for, what, what it's worth. And we can really break down into where is that coming from? What are the things that are contributing to, uh, to that price? You know, both between cities and then within cities. So with this... This is a pretty solved, pretty solved puzzle. It's just a bunch of econometrics or a bunch of statistics, data analysis. Sorry, there's some, some work being done over here. <laughs> so, um, yeah. All right. Stop there to pause for the, uh, for the work. <laughs>